good afternoon dear students this would be the part 2 of the clinical applications of mri and i'm very much sure that would you would like and enjoy this segment of the clinical application of mri because you are going to see lot of images in this session now there is a comparison between the ct and mr ct is faster less expensive less sensitive to the patient patient's movements easier in claustrophobics acute hemorrhage calcification and bone details and foreign bodies these are the things which can be very well seen in ct as compared to the mr now coming to the mr there is no ionizing radiation greater detail hence more sensitive and more specific any plane scanning contrast less allergic and no beam hardening artifacts as we see in the ct scan especially in the posterior fossa of the brain no neuroimaging you know we already discussed in the previous section that mri is the study of choice in various uh, neurological diseases now we see here that no neurology or neurosurgery without mri mr brain has largely replaced ct brain but for head injury suspected acute intracranial hemorrhage ct is still the study of choice now mr is superior to ct in most occasions ct is a poor man's mri and all other indications now these are the indications where you can advise mri and it can include anything everything just to see the anatomy congenital anomalies hereditary and metabolic diseases infections demyelination or demyelinating diseases vascular events tumors trauma dementia hydrocephalus cranial nerve involvement orthograms venograms skull base and pituitary glands especially the skull base and pituitary glands are very well depicted on mri as compared to the ct now these are the various images or tools which can be used in neuro imaging t1 weighted images t2 weighted images flare mr angiography mr venography gradient images and post contrast with gadolinium dw images adc diffusion tensor images fmri and these are the various names for the various mode of uh, study in the mri these are called the sequences so these are the various name for various sequences which are utilized in the mri csf flow mapping and mr spectrography spectroscopy stroke imaging mr superior to ct in diagnosing hyperacute infarct mr is as sensi sensitive as ct in diagnosing acute intracranial hemorrhage mr is more expensive and less easily available as compared to the ct ct is currently widely used to exclude hemorrhage before thrombolysis so this is a little bit difference between the mr and ct as far as the stroke images are or study is concerned now these are the images of ct 
as well as MR in acute infarct, water-based images, water density images of the brain are more sensitive to the acute infarct. infarct. Now you, you can see the CT above and below the MR images at the same level of the brain. In CT, you can see a bright structure in the cerebellar region, just below the midbrain and pons, and it can be seen on MR as low signal area. Similarly, on the right side of the screen, if you see a small hypodense area in the centrum semi-ovale, and the same level MR water dense images is taken where arrow is sh showing a hyper intense area which is a demyelination or an acute infarct. When to skip CT? Babies and children avoid ionizing radiation. Evaluation of headaches, suspected demyelination, dysmyelination vasculitis, SOLs, hydrocephalus and pituitary lesions, non-invasive, non-contrast MRA, MRV and cranial nerve evaluation. These are the areas where you can skip CT and you can order for MR. Now this is one example of brain infection with virus. This is herpes encephalitis, the CT and the MR at the same level, same patient. If you see, the CT shows hardly any abnormality, whereas the MR is depicting an ab abnormal signal in the right temporal region, whereas arrow is marking that area. So this is herpes encephalitis. The idea to show this, these images is the sensitivity of the MR. Glioma. Again, one patient CT on the left and MR on the right. In the CT you hardly see anything. Even contrast has been given. While on the right of the screen as you can see a small area of abnormal signal in the right occipital region. So this is a case of glioma. Now spine imaging, MR has a clear edge on the spine imaging as compared to the X-ray and CT. MR is the investigation of choice Conventional CT, CT myelogram, conventional myelogram are no longer performed unless MR is contraindicated for some other reasons. Indication and contraindication same. First line of investigation in suspected spinal infection, cord compression and corda equina syndrome and shaitika. Disc lesions and MRI. So the disc lesion, disc protrusion, and disc extrusion are very well depicted on MR images of the spine. So virtually everyone after the age of 40 years will have at least one degenerative disc or end plate changes. Not all patients with shatika will have a positive MR. Now this is the case of metastasis involving the lower spine, the lower lumbar and the uh, first sacral vertebra. As you can see, here you can see on the left of the screen, this is T2 weighted image. The CSF is bright and on the left side, this is T1 weighted image and you can see the CSF as the 
low signal and the vertebral body of L5 and S1 they are showing abnormal signal due to the involvement of the metastasis to these vertebral bodies and posterior elements. Head and neck imaging, MR is complementary or second line of investigation in many of the head and neck pathologies. Superior to CT in staging head and neck malignancies characterize the head and neck lesions better than CT. Complementary to a CT in petrous temporal and paranasal sinus evaluation. First line of investigation in orbital lesions. Now this is a case of second branchial cyst, left cyst. You can see the T1 and T2 weighted images. These are mostly T2 weighted images where you can see a bright or hyper intense well defined rounded lesion in the left side of the neck. Now this is a tongue based carcinoma. On the left side of screen is CT, does not show much of the things while as compared to the MR you can see there is a mass and uh, there is a surrounding fat straining and contrast has been given and the things are very well picked and you can see the carcinoma involving the base of the tongue on the right side. Now musculoskeletal imaging, again as compared to the CT, the MR has a very good differentiation of the soft tissues as compared to the CT. So initial in evaluation of the bones we do with the plain x-rays and then MRI. MRI is sensitive than CT in diagnosing occult fractures. Initial evaluation of the soft tissues. First of all, we do ultrasound and then MRI and joint imaging is done with the MRI. So fatigue fractures are very well picked up by the MR as compared to the CT. Again, we discuss that these are the various tools or these, are, these can be used in musculoskeletal imaging, T1 weighted images, T2 weighted imaging, fat sap, fat sap means fat saturation, T1, stair imaging and fat sap 2 and post gadolinium studies MR arthrography. Now these are the various indications in musculoskeletal diseases of all fractures marrow abnormalities, ligament pathologies, tendon pathologies, muscular injuries, infection, bone and soft tissue tumors, and liberal pathologies. Now again, there's a comparison of the simple X-ray and MRI. On X-ray, you hardly find any lien involving the tibia or the fracture is merely visible as compared to the MR on the right of the screen here you can see the clear line of the fracture involving the proximal or articulating end of the tibia. Another case in which there is an avascular necrosis involving the tendous bone on x-ray, nothing is evident, everything seems to be okay as compared to the MR which shows an area of altered signal indicating avascular necrosis. Rotator cuff tear, nowadays ultrasound is performed and we can pick up the rotator cuff tears very well on that but MR again has the superior edge where you can see the other structures in one image the arrow depicts the partial thickness tear of the 
supraspinous tendon. Now this is Bankath and hill sac lien along with the effusion and the shoulder joint. Now this is the near complete rupture of the anterior crucial ligament. Two signals, that is loss of normal signal through the anterior crucial ligament. This is normal posterior crucial ligament. As you can see the dark signal or low intensity which is a normal thing. Now meniscal injuries. This is very interesting. You can see the meniscal injuries without orthoscopy. This is non-invasive and you can see the meniscal injuries. The arrow shows the level of the meniscal tear. Another case of meniscal tear, multiple arrows indicating. This is the median meniscus, horizontal tear of the meniscus. Again, this is median meniscus. Now, abdominal imaging can also be done with MR because we know that MR is much more sensitive to the soft tissue differentiation as compared to the CT. So the different problems which can involve the abdomen or abdominal organs like solving tools in liver, pancreas, renal and adrenal lesions, primary modality in local staging of the rectal CA, endometrial carcinoma, cervical carcinoma, prostate, and vaginal carcinoma, non-invasive modality in evaluating pancreas, pancreatogiliary tract, that's MRCP, and scrotal and penile imaging, uterus and ovary imaging. Here is one image, axial image, through the abdomen, showing liver and the spleen on the left side. The arrow shows a mass invading the right portal vein. The hypo or low intensity rounded mass which is depicted by the long arrow. Nothing abnormal in this picture but just to, just to show you the tissue differentiation. You can see the liver, you can see the kidneys, you can see the gut. So you can also see the muscles and the vertebral column, the disc. So everything is so clear in the this coronal image of the abdomen. You can see the diaphragms. This is MRCP. You can see the gallbladder and you can see the common bile duct and pancreatic duct. They are all opening in the duodenum which is fluid filled. So this is a non-invasive technique where you can see the problems involving the common bile duct, the gallbladder and pancreatic duct. Rectal carcinoma. The T indicates the tumor. So you can get the rectal image with the help of MR, you can stage it, you can see the lymph nodes, you can see the involvement of the adjacent structure, the displacement of the fat and the involvement of the layers of the rectum and staging for further evaluation. Vascular MRI, peripheral vascular arteriogram with or without IV contrast, aortogram, dissection, pulmonary angiogram, arteriogram, 
when CT is contraindicated. Cardiac MRI, you, you can see through the, that picture which is the, in, on the right of your screen. You can see the cardiac chambers, the aorta and other vessels very clearly. Very useful in congenital heart diseases, cardiomyopathies, cardi cardiomyopathies and evidence in the merging the valuation of the myocardial infarction. Now very important after the ultrasound and mammography, the MR mammography is very much helpful in depicting, depicting small or large diseases. The picture on the right is the MRI of the breast. The, where the problem which, are, which can be solved with MRI are the breast implant, recurrence of the tumor and multifocal diseases. This is the MRI of the breast, as you can see the normal breast. MRI of the breast, as you can see, a well-defined nodular regions, most likely fibroadenoma. You can see the fat and fat planes and other structures. MRI of the breast implants. MRA of the breast, as you can see very nicely the arterial supply of the breast. Fetal MRI. Now you cannot have a CT, you cannot have an, have an X-ray of the fetus, but again MRI is very helpful in assessment of the congenital anomalies, placental abnormalities and twin assessment because MRI has no ionizing radiation so it's very safe in pregnancy. Here you can see the fetal MRI, all the structures, you can see the spine of the fetus, the eyeball, the brain and the urinary bladder of the fetus. So it sometimes it appears that it is more sensitive to more as compared to the ultrasound in this case you can have uh, spina bifida and there is a meningo seal the arrow depicts that thing in axial as well as in the sagittal view fetal mri again one fetus upside down you can see the brain ventricles the eyeball and other fetal structures the summary expensive time consuming investigation because it may take 15 to 45 minutes for one study complex physics involved too many sequences difficult to interpret in untrained eyes to untrained eyes relatively safe but there are definite contraindications and ask specification to get the right answer MRI invaluable imaging tool in the diagnosis of the various diseases from head to toe. Chief modality in neuroimaging and musculoskeletal imaging. Problem solving tool in abdominal pathologies. Invaluable tool in local staging of the most of the malignancies. And in the next slide, we will see today's assignment. How does CSF appear in MRI T1 and T2 weighted images. Very simple. If you hear or see this discussion, the answer would be very simple. I hope you, will, you must have enjoyed this part of the clinical application of MRI. Thank you very much. <laughs>